All right, Shalom. This is the brother Nahalia from the GMS Orlando camp. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yahshua Allah. And a sincere salutation to all Yuakim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Aquath, who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. Yahweh is the name of the one they ignorantly call God. Yahweh Shai is the name of the one they ignorantly call Jesus. Baha Shem is in the name. Raka is spirit. Kodash is holy. Akyam is brothers. Akwath is sisters. Shalawan means peace. Peace. And Yasha Al is Israel in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. This is Psalm chapter 98 and verse 9. And it reads Before the Lord, for he cometh to judge the earth with righteousness, shall he judge the world and the people with equity and i want to go into a lesson on that through the spirit you know the, the concept of the kingdom of heaven being uh in the spiritual realm and not playing out on earth is now being made known you know beginning with our apostles and their elders before them the actual understanding of the scriptures is being revealed and part of that a big part of that is that the kingdom of heaven is on earth and it's a government that's going to uh, be ran with equity. Now, equity and equality aren't necessarily the same. Meaning everybody's not going to be on an equal footing in the kingdom of heaven. As far as status, as far as hierarchy. However, equity is going to be a part of the incentive, the agenda. Because you think about the government right now, equity is not a part of the incentive. All right? They're not in the business of distributing the resources of the earth in an equitable fashion. It's actually the exact opposite. The reality is that even though you have technology, even though things have progressed, so to speak, you have a small population on the earth that live well, and then you have the rest of the earth where everybody else is struggling. And Esau Edom, he'll tell you that this is how it's supposed this is how it has to be, but it's not true, all right? There's more than enough resources on earth for people to have enough for what they need, man, more than what they need, all right? Real quick, this is Proverbs 29 and 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn, all right? And the people are in mourning because, again, the, the government that rules the earth, all right, the nation of people that rules the earth, the so-called white man, he has no interest in equity. He has no interest in distributing the resources in a way that makes it better for the majority of the people on the earth. You know, I remember hearing a saying, I believe it was in a movie, where it says, the king, the king does not exist. The people do not exist for the king's sake. The kings exist for the people's sake. And see, when we grow up, especially in the West, we believe, you know, just based on what we see, that basically the king is the, he's the, he's the guy that everybody has to serve, and he's the one that's uh, put on high to have this, this luxurious status while everybody else suffers. Now, the king does have a better status all across the board, but the purpose is to judge in righteousness. It's not just a title to collect women, lands, horses. Matter of fact. Let me bring this out. It says Ecclesiastes 10 and 16. Woe to thee, O land, when thy king is a child and thy princes eat in the morning. Verse 17, blessed art thou, O land, when thy king is the son of nobles, and thy princes eat in due season for strength and not for drunkenness. That, now that's powerful, right? Because when you think about equity, right now Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, they have exhausted the resources of the earth so that they can live in pleasure at the expense of everyone else. The Lord is so morally upright that Yahweh Shai, who everything belongs to, the 
The Lord gave everything to his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, and the nation of Israel, beginning with the elect, our joint heirs. That rulership is going to be with equity. Now, it doesn't mean everybody's going to get the same, the king's portion. But what it means is that the, the resources are going to be distributed in a way that is not greed driven. We live in a society that is greed driven. Put the lies to the side. Just the, the fact that greed is the incentive. When you think about capitalism in a nutshell, it incentivizes greed. And you get progress, but at the expense of the people on the bottom. Now, will there always be poor? To a degree, yeah. In comparison to the rich, yeah. But the quality of life does not have to be this way. And this is how we know Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, is the son of perdition. Because with all of the resources of the earth, of the planet, at his dispense, the only thing he's got better at is death. This is the beauty of Yahweh Shah coming to bring equity, man. Man. And it just, it makes you imagine, you know, the kingdom of heaven, you know, and how it's going to be through the spirit. Because after that thousand years, the, the heathen nations outside of the so-called white men are going to be able to go back into their lands. But they're going to have to live under the law of the Lord, man. That is going to be the law of the planet, the law of the universe, if you can receive it. But they're going to have their own lands. They're going to bring tribute to us as a nation of people. But they're going to be in a state of rejoicing under a righteous rulership. It's not going to be like the rulership of the so-called white man where a few people on the earth get to benefit from the earth and everybody else is suffering. Now, I want to bring this out real quick. This is Psalms chapter 98 and verse 9 in the NLT. All right, and it reads, Before the Lord, for the Lord is, com is coming to judge the earth he will judge the world with justice and the nations with fairness send an economic hitman to a, a third world country it's not fairness man it's really taking taking advantage of your position of power in the earth because we're going to rule the other nations with a rod of iron but we're not going to um, how should I say this? We're not going to be uh, wicked towards the other nations. We're not going to try to deceive them. We're not going to try to steal their lands. We're not going to try to give them loans we know they can't pay back at all. Just so we can take advantage of them. That's not dealing with, dealing in equity. And this is why Esau Edom is going to have to be removed. And the Lord is teaching, Lord willing we be a part of the number. Like it says in Ecclesiastes the 10th chapter. A uh, blessed old land when your king is the son of nobles. The Lord is making us a nation of kings and priests. And we, we actually descend from nobles. We're actually a regal nation of people. So the Lord is teaching us a very valuable lesson in rulership by looking at what not to do. You know, through Esau, Edom, the so-called white man's rulership. Real quick, this is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6. Because the perfect punishment for nobles is to make them servants to their servants. And it's also a very beautiful lesson because being on the bottom, you get to see the consequence of a wicked rulership. You get to see the underbelly of a rulership, being on the bottom of it. Because that's how you really tell the quality of a rulership. When you look at the average life of the average member of the uh, of your society. Now, if you zoom out and you think about the whole planet, the whole world, the average person on earth is suffering, man. Outside of these European countries and a, and a couple of other places, the world is a wilderness. And that's how you judge the quality of a rulership. And this is how we know Esau Edom is the son of perdition.
All right, real quick, this is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6 and verse 1. Hear therefore, O ye kings, and understand. Learn ye that be judges of the ends of the earth. Give ear ye that rule the people, and glory in the multitude of nations. For power is given you of the Lord, and sovereignty from the highest, who shall try your works and search out your counsels. So now Esau's on trial. The Lord gave him the earth. He's been on trial. Now the Lord is making inquisition and he's investigating the rulership of the so-called white man and what is, what is happening, right? Verse four, because being ministers of his kingdom, ye have not judged aright, nor kept the law, nor walked after the counsel of Yahweh by Shemal Shai. And as inquisition is being made into the so-called white man's council, it's being discovered that he's not ruling the earth with equity. He's abusing the, his rulership. He's abusing the people that the Lord has given him uh, sovereignty over. And this is why he's going to be judged, man. But also for the elect, Lord willing, this is, uh, we're a part of that number. This is an open classroom. This is an opportunity to look around and learn from the wickedness of a rulership and why it's important through the spirit of Pavi al Shemal Shai to judge uprightly. Because ultimately through the spirit, the Lord's gonna give the nation of Israel, beginning with the elect under Yahweh Shai, rulership over the earth. And through that rulership, the people are gonna rejoice, man. Because it doesn't have to be like this. The so-called white man justifies it being like this because, again, he's a deceiver and he's not upright. But he does that to justify his wickedness. That whole pull yourself up by your bootstraps, knowing, knowing that you took advantage of, of Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And that it's going to take them decades, hundreds of years, centuries, or decades to catch up if left to their own devices. But he'll lie to our people and say, look, you got to pick yourself up by your bootstraps. It's not our fault at this point. It's yours. Knowing damn well that, man, but that's a whole nother subject. But the point being is that Esau is not ruling with equity and he knows that. And he's intentionally deceiving the people, man. And that's why, as the scriptures say, the Lord is going to set up one that's profitable. All right. And that is Yahweh Shai with the elect under him. Lord willing, we be a part of that number. There's Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 4. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord, and in due time he will set over it one that is profitable. Because the people don't exist for the king's sake. The king exists for the people's sake. And Yahweh Shai is coming to judge with equity. Now he's going to have the greater portion without a shadow of a doubt. Because the kingdom ultimately belongs to him. But he's going to rule the people with equity. So Lord willing, this was edifying. With that, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Lukakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yahshua Allah. And the sincere salutation to all Yoakim, who are preaching this word and believing this word. And to the Aquath, who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. Shalom.